Yukis, thank you. Last June, a gunman wielding a semi-automatic assault rifle opened fire on Republican lawmakers practicing for a charity baseball game in suburban Virginia. Several people were wounded during the incident, including House Majority Whip Steve Scalise. The shooting lasted about nine minutes. A story published Monday by BuzzFeed News provides an in-depth look at that day's events and says a number of factors prevented the deadliest political assassination in American history. Lissandra Villa is a politics reporter for BuzzFeed News and one of the authors of that piece. She joins me now from Washington. Uh, Lisa, this is a remarkable piece of reporting. Can you take us through some of the things that you write prevented the shooting from becoming a historic massacre? Thanks, Elaine. There was an incredible amount that went right that morning, um, besides obviously the shooting. Um, to start with, there was the fact that there was a, a gate that was locked on the third base side of the field that prevented the shooter from being able to get onto the field because there was only one exit in and out. Um, and if he'd been able to get onto the field, that would have, everyone that we talked to said that just saved a bunch of lives that the pitchers for the team had the day off um, to rest their arms the day before the game was also incredible because otherwise they would have been stuck in the third base uh, batting cage that they would have been practicing in and that would have just been feet away from the from the shooter. And then when the shooter first took his first shot, it actually hit the fence. And if you go out to the field, you can see where the fence is broken. Um, and that, they say, prevented the first bullet from hitting uh, Congressman Trent Kelly, who was standing on third base, just feet away from the shooter. And even that uh, majority whip Steve Scalise was there that day was was a huge, one of the miracles that we talk about in the piece, because mm -hmm. if he hadn't been there, his security detail wouldn't have been there. And and his uh, the two officers, Capitol Police officers, Griner and Bailey, are the ones that everybody credits with saving their lives because they were able to keep the shooter's attention away from all of the unarmed players. Well, this piece is so thorough. You spoke to many of the people who were there that day, and the level of detail is so compelling. I wonder what stood out to you during your reporting for this piece? What stood out to me was just the human response that everyone was having, having and the different ways that everybody internalized that day. Um, so there are some people who don't think about it very often and, and just try to go about their days and it's part of them and they acknowledge it, of course, but they don't reflect on it very often. And then there are others like Congressman Roger Williams, who we open the piece with, who thinks about this almost every day. Um, so it was, it was incredible to sit down. We did almost all of the, the interviews in person with a few exceptions and it was wonderful to sit down with them and we just asked them to walk us through that morning. Um, and, and that's how we were able to get a lot of that detail. Well, the FBI concluded that the shooting was not politically motivated, but the shooter carried a list of GOP lawmakers in his pocket. Some lawmakers quoted in the article took issue with the FBI's characterization. What did you hear from them? This is something that they are very upset about. Um, so after the shooting, they, there were several briefing, briefings. And in the last one, what they heard from the FBI, from everyone that was there that day, um, they, they heard that it, it wasn't politically motivated. And, and like you said, they, they took issue with it just because of all of the facts that were around it, including the list, um, including how much time the, the shooter had spent on the field beforehand. And then also the prosecutor's report says specifically that this was fueled by rage at Republican lawmakers. So there, there was a lot of a lot of angst left over in the lawmakers over that particular point, and they accused the FBI of being political on this. Well, you note that the way this shooting faded from the news and from people's minds, that it was relatively quickly that this news faded. Why do you think that's significant? It's significant because America would be very different had two dozen people, approximately two dozen people, been shot dead last summer. Just think about all of the outcome that would have come from that, right? There would have been funerals. There would have been special elections. There would have been maybe a trial had the shooter survived. Um, so, so the circumstances of that morning sort of made it out because no one other than the shooter died. Um, the, the story sort of slipped to the background. 
Well, it's, as I said, it's an extraordinary piece of reporting. The details, particularly with respect to those who acted as first responders, um, in hearing it in their own words from their own points of view about what it was like to be there um, is certainly something that is so vivid. Lisa Villa, thank you so much.